Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you guys all here. You made it, so that's good. It's uh, clocks went forward. They went forward this morning, didn't they? I should know. I'm, I'm here on time, so uh, I just went along with my my schedule. Um, so does that mean if, if you if you don't do it, you're late or you're early? I can. Like you're early. Early. Okay. Yeah, I can never quite quite work it out. Yeah. It's funny how I notice when you're younger, when the clocks go back, that's always the good one. But then when you get older, when the clocks go forward, that becomes the good one as well. So regardless, welcome. Good to see you. If you're new here, if you found us for the first time, do click on like and subscribe. That way you can keep in touch with some of the content that comes through throughout the week and also some of the content that uh, has been made throughout the year as well. We have a whole year's worth of, of content. Uh, I've been going through a few bits and pieces the last sort of couple of weeks and there's some good stuff in there actually so I'd recommend if you go back and encourage yourself or, or try and listen to some, some of that stuff as well. Like I said if you're new uh, we're going to have about 15 minutes uh, of worship we're going to come back to me there's a few announcements I want to give about next Sunday as well which we're really excited about we might even be able to see physical bodies for the first time in a long time I'm going to explain some of the details about what that is and what that means uh, I've also got a few bits of information just about some of the properties we've been looking at as well I appreciate that sometimes it's sort of out of sight out of mind so i just want to give you a bit of an update just so you know what's going on uh, in the life of the church and from where you guys are at home and then we have chris may with us he'll be speaking for about 25 minutes or so uh, and then maybe we'll have to have a bit of time of prayer and a bit of ministry as well but before we start let's just pray let's give this morning over to to god and allow him just to continue his work in us God, we come here again, and we just invite you into our hearts. We just receive the, the love and the mercy that you have for us, Jesus. Thank you, God, that you've, you've set us free, that you've, you've wiped away the slate, Lord, and that we can start again fresh, knowing that you love us, Lord. And we come here this morning just to give you our attention, Jesus. Amen. It's coming on the clouds. Kingdoms, kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Open up the gate, make way before the King of Kings. God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb. Slain for the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is a lamb, the lamb that was 
save for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is a lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Darkness tries to roll over my bones the Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own the Brokenness and pain is all I know No, oh, I won't be shaken No, oh, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide. I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind No, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There's power, there's power that can break off every chain. There's power. There's resurrection power that can save There's power in your name Power in your name There's power that can break off every chain There's power that can empty out a grave There's resurrection power that can save Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your in your name the power to save only your whisper mountains shake Jesus our hope and strength you made a way unlock these chains here in your presence strongholds break Free by the love you gave We give you the highest praise 
You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. There on a tree, merciful King, broken and shamed for all to see. The Father laid down His Son. Darkness to light, death lost to life, heaven and earth will join and sing. Jesus has We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest. You deserve it all, you deserve it all. With every breath that's in my lungs, my heart cries out to you belongs the glory. Through every loss or victory, my soul will rise to only bring you glory. With every breath that's in my lungs, my heart cries out to you belongs the glory. Through every loss or victory, my soul will rise to only bring you glory. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all, you deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all, you deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise. God, it's at this time that we thank you and we remember the price that you paid, that you gave it all, Lord. You took the place of so many of the things that we deserve. the responsibility that we should have borne for the things we've done and the things we said that you stood in that place and you absorbed the punishment that should have been ours God and we are just forever grateful we are relieved and yet on top of that you love us and you are faithful to us Jesus we just it's our pleasure and it's our it's who we are Lord just to lay our lives down before you and just to acknowledge you God as our father thank you thank you Jesus Welcome back. This is normally the part of our service where we, we give of our financials, our tithes and our offerings. Information will come up about that uh, a little, a short while later. I just wanted to give you a few bits of this information before we, before we carry on. Obviously, we've just talked about, we've referred to, to Easter and the things that he's done. 
This Sunday is Palm Sunday, as you will see the palm leaves that are perched around my, around my head and around the, the border here. We're really excited to say that next Sunday we will not be live streaming here in the offices, but we will be meeting live together and in person. I want to give you a bit of information, some details about that. Um, I'm going to enunciate my words so that I can be absolutely clear on, on the information. So we will be meeting next Sunday. We will not be meeting at the Coptic Church as we thought we may have been. We've done a bit of a, bit of a pivot uh, because we appreciate it's Easter, it's, it's Easter Sunday, it's Sunday morning. Obviously people getting together around so lunchtime and things like that. Details that we wouldn't have known when we were making plans at the beginning. So we will not be meeting at the Coptic Church. We will not be meeting in the afternoon, but we will be meeting at Nobel School. It will be in the morning. Same sort of time as church would be, 11 o'clock. It'll be the shorter service, uh, 11 to 11.45, most likely. It will be 11 to 11.45. Um, for, for those of you, we won't be meeting inside, clearly. It'll be outside. There is a lovely area, which we actually went to, to, to check out this week, just to, be double sh just to be absolutely sure. It's actually better than I remember, which is always a good sign. So if, if you come into Nobel, you go down to the car park, all the way down to the bottom, there's an area at the bottom. There's a small amphitheater with a, a canopy. It's a very gradual sort of slope. There's a really nice big wide area for plenty of distance, uh, plenty of space for distancing. You could probably fit about two, 200 or easily more people than that to be able to distance safely. There are a few benches there if people sort of struggle with or standing for that period of time. There will be access to the toilets uh, as well that, that, that will, will be there. It's a lovely enclosed area. So if you have family or children, you don't have to worry about them disappearing or not knowing where they're going or, or anything like that. So we'll be having an Easter service. We'll be having as much PA as we can we can get away with. Uh, like I said, there's a, there's a canopy, so there's a, a nice sort of band sort of area and then uh, people in our congregations to, to watch from there. And it's a chance for us to get together. I know what we did at, uh, at Christmas time, a lot of you were able to come out. Some of you weren't able to or, or didn't feel quite comfortable. If you, as, as you feel comfortable, as you feel able to, you are more than welcome to come along. Bring, uh, bring along people who may have been searching or struggling during, during this time. We know there have been a lot of people. So the invitation really is open and wide. Uh, there's plenty of space to be able to do it. There's a couple of pictures on Facebook if you want to see uh, that I'm saying uh, that actually what exists is what I'm saying. Then you can have a, a little look on Facebook. We'll try to give you a bit of an idea about, about what that will look like. But that will be at 11 o'clock next Sunday. We will not be live streaming. We will be recording some of it. And sort of posting some of it so at least you can see and hope potentially some of the some of the service as well but so do bear that in mind do try and come along it'd be lovely to see people it's been nice these last few weeks that we started to see people that we haven't seen before it's, it feels like oh I, I remember you or it really has been a year since i've seen you so it, it's lovely sort of to, to have that so i would encourage you uh to 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 come along i'm just making sure i've got the information the most important bit of information probably for some people is that there will also be an easter egg hunt as well uh so once we finish the the service there'll be an easter egg hunt like i say it's enclosed plenty of places to hide easter eggs safely and distance and in your family bubbles and units and so on so uh if you have families or kids bring them along and you may even get lucky and find a chocolate egg and some prizes and all kinds of things like that as well the weather says it's going to be good. I've checked BBC several times. It's got a sunshine in the morning and a cloud in the afternoon, which is always a good sign. Uh, and the weather around it is sort of good as well. If not, bring your umbrellas. It'll be 40 minutes of a bit of a drizzle or whatever, but it's not looking like that. So all signs are good. All signs are pointing, uh, pointing that way as well. Also with Easter, on Good Friday, we'll be having Good Friday, Easter Good Friday reflections as well. That will be on Zoom. We'll be uh, meeting, just having some worship and some Bible readings and things like that. So if you want to join in and, and celebrate that as part of, the, part of the Easter journey, the details on Zoom will be coming up on Facebook on the website on Monday. I believe that's set for. So pay attention to that, and that'll be another chance in which you can join in uh, with the Easter journey. If you don't feel like you're able to come on Sunday, but I would encourage you, if you feel comfortable, you are more than welcome, and more than welcome to come along and to bring people along with you as well. I just wanted to give one last uh, bit of information uh, for you, you guys. You guys may not see some of the pictures, but you can go back and, and look at the uh, the live stream. We're all, as you know, we're sort of always on the lookout for a property. We're always on the lookout for a centralised venue that could be seen, that could be accessible to the people in this town, where we can do what we do, but do it more and do it better. 
uh, and a, a place where the town can see us and can come, a, a real sort of centre of mercy, a centre of compassion in the town. It's something we're always looking for. I appreciate that uh, coming to church, so you may not always see that sort of, sort of what's sort of going on, but I just wanted to encourage you and give you a little bit of an update just to let you know that we are looking. It's something that's always on the radar. It's always sort of bubbling away. Obviously, it depends on what is available in Stevenage. Last year, we were looking at the, the old Waitrose venue in the old town. That was quite a big venue. It had an upstairs and a downstairs. Uh, it probably had, t- had double sort of what we, what we actually needed. And we were trying to work out if that was possible, if that was viable. It turned out it wasn't. Um, and, but also, you may have read that that's been bought by an undertaker's now uh, since then. But we've had a few properties come up. Again, not quite suitable. I just want to give you a, a flavor about what's happening and what's sort of going, going around at the moment. So I've got a little slideshow. We're just going to show up, which the first slide is going to come out now. We had a property that come, came up in, in, just by the leisure park, in between St. John's Ambulance and Airbus. It was an old uh, Sainsbury's uh, data distribution center, if that's a, that's a, that's a thing. Um, again, it, there was about 19,000 square feet, so it's just under double what we were sort of looking for. We've had a look at it. Uh, you'll see the picture of the front at the moment. If we click to the next uh, next slide, you'll see an example of some of the office spaces that, that were in there. As you can see, it's sort of quite big, uh, which allows stuff for our compassion and our offices and our kids' ministries and all sorts of other wonderful things that we can imagine that we would we want to do as well. If you click to the next slide, you'll see that there's a, an, it's hard to see with all the servers there, but that would be an example of a, of a place where we could have a meeting, where we could congregate. That place has actually been bought already. That went quite quickly, but that's something we were looking at. It, overall, it was just a bit too, it, it was quite a bit too big, um, and it also went sort of quite quickly. But that's an example of some of the, some of the properties that, that do come up, uh, which we are looking at. We know that some of you give faithfully. Uh, to the property fund and thank you so much for that i'm going to come back to that in a, in a second um but the, the of, often the issue with Stevenage is a lot of the properties that come up are either very big or very small and that sort of niche that we're sort of looking for in the middle sometimes uh, doesn't come by quite as much an example for a property that comes up that's a bit smaller is the next one which was the community center in chels park i think it's called uh, over by sort of gresley way Perfect sort of building, uh, lots of r- uh, big hall rooms around it. it. Would be great for offices and children's stuff and compassion things. Again, but just a bit too small. The, the the hall was essentially the size of a big babbins court. If we could stretch it out, it would have been perfect. We might make some inquiries about it. it's for rent at the moment. We might make some inquiries about whether we could we could uh, switch that and if it's for sale and if there's an opportunity to to extend, but um, again, this is just, a, and you click to the next slide, I think that gives a, a bit of more of a close-up sort of picture of, 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 of what it looks like. But I just, uh, if you come back to me now, I just wanted to give you an idea about some of the things that we are looking at. We, it is on the pipeline, we are, it is bubbling away. We're waiting for that right um, building, and it, there might be a combination of waiting for the right one, and also just looking with the eyes of wisdom and common sense about how we could sort of develop things as well. The church is in quite a good position in terms of the property fund is uh, just over about 100000 now, I think, specifically for a property. And thank you so much for those that continue to give faithfully into that. It's, it's, it, it's, it, it allows us to be ready to go when that time comes. And obviously that time will come as well, where we'll eventually come to you sooner, hopefully, rather than later, say, look, this is where we believe God's leading us. This is where we, we feel we can carry on our vision, our values as a, ch- as a church. Who's, who's with us, who wants to jump in with us. And so there will come that moment as well, which we'll sort of explain to you. But the, the church resources are looking much he- are looking healthier than they have done for a while. And so we're in, we find ourselves in a position where we are able to move uh, when that sort of property comes up as well. But I just wanted to give you an idea what that looks like visually, some of the things that happen. We are looking, it is something that's on our radar and it's our real heart to be What's been wonderful about this last year is how much we've been able to reach and meet the needs of the town, how much we've been able to be a city on a hill, uh, a center of mercy for people to come to us. And people know about us. People are, the word vineyard and Steenish Vineyard is popping up and is coming up and people are equating it with kindness and mercy and God's love and God's redemption and his unconditional merciful love as well. And it's, it's, it's and with a baby shed that's been launched and SMDA, it's great to see so many strands of us just serving the city which we live and bringing life to that city as well. 
So I just want to give you a bit of information. Hopefully that's um, given you a bit of a taste of sort of what's going on. For those of you who are around here, you can go back in to look at the pictures and, and so on. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to flip to the, the slideshow. And we're going to come back here in about a minute or so. And Chris May is going to be speaking for us. So God bless you. I'll see you guys at the end of all this as we, as we close up this Sunday morning. Hi, um, I'm Chris, and uh, it's my uh, it's my turn to share a few things with you this morning. So uh, I'm very grateful for that, um, and well done for all of you who've managed to be watching this live and not still laying in bed. As, as Daniel said, with the clocks going forward, you will would have been late. I just like to point that out. You would have been late if you haven't put the clocks forward. Um, I always remember, and I probably told you this before, but when you get to my age, um, then you do tend to. Uh, oh, so I'm facing this way, aren't I? You're there, aren't you? When you get to sorry, when you get to my age, you do tend to say things several times, as my children have pointed out to me on many occasions. Um, one year, my dad decided that he'd do the clocks, and instead of putting the clocks um, back, he put them forward an hour. And uh, when my aunt came round to see us, she said, "What are you doing?" My dad said, "We're having an early lunch." She said, "It's ten o'clock in the morning." Um, so you need to get it right, don't you? Okay. Um, what I'd like to share with you this morning um, is, uh, well, there were a couple of bits on the news this week that uh, I found quite interesting. First of all, and you may have heard this, um, you may have heard about the Regent honey eater from Australia. Um, now, this bird um, is an endangered bird now because um, basically it's forgotten its song. It doesn't remember its song. And that means that it's not able to attract females, which means that it's beginning to die out. Um, what it is doing is trying to mimic the songs of the birds around it in order to, uh, well, to attract a female. Uh, what they're doing to try and help with this is they're playing the song to the bird so that uh, it can remember. But I thought that was really interesting. The second bit of news was out a book, about a book that's been released by a guy called Michael Spitzer. It's called The Musical Human. And um, it's going to be serialised on Radio 4 in a couple of weeks' time. Um, I haven't read the book, so... I'm just, this is just sort of the headlines that, that came onto the, the little uh, advert on the, on the radio. Um, it's a book about music, obviously, and um, interesting enough about the fact that we're all musical. 
And I, I quite like that. I'm looking forward to, to listening to that. Um, but the guy asked the, the interviewer, when do you think the first music was heard on the earth? And uh, they said, oh, I don't know, really. You know, when did we first start? He said, no, the first music was heard on the earth um, uh, way before we ever walked on the earth. The first music was heard on the earth. The birds were singing. The animals were, were singing. Uh, they were making noises. There was music long before we ever made any music. And I thought that was interesting. And when I looked at the some of the bits about the book, it said 165 million years ago saw the birth of rhythm. The universe is making a noise. And if you look it up, it's making a noise in B flat, apparently. Not that that means a lot to me, because I don't really understand a lot about music, but it's making a noise. Um, 66 million years ago was the first melody. And 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens created the first musical instrument. Um, and it all that got me thinking, those two articles, about what am I going to share with you this morning? And, uh, and I'm going to use the word share and not preach, because someone said to me, uh, I, when are you preaching? I mean, I, I don't particularly like that word, but I looked it up in the dictionary just to see what it meant. And uh, one, of the, um, one of the definitions was to give moral advice in an obtrusive way. And I'm sure you don't want any moral advice in an obtrusive way. And I can honestly testify to the fact that I've had a lot of that in, over uh, my life as well. Um, but even the word teach implies some sort of authority on the issue. So I'm not going to use that word either. I like the word share because it's basically we're all on a journey, aren't we? And even in my old age, and it is old, I got my pension last week, so I was really pleased about that. Um, I've got a lot more to learn. I really have. And in fact, I've got a lot to unlearn uh, over the last uh, several decades. So let's settle for the word share. And hopefully there'll just be a few thoughts here that can be an encouragement to you. So how does this endangered Australian bird and a book on music have anything to do with what I might want to say today? Well, let's start with Revelation. Let's start with Revelation. The Bible is a revelation of God. Uh, it's more, we know this, than mere words on a page, more print on a page. That it has it's the, the mystery, the beauty, the richness of those words reveal something of who God is and who ha God's love for us and God's pursuit of his creation. But the first act of divine revelation is creation itself. The first Bible is the Bible of nature that was written, according to scientists, 13.8 billion years ago. So it's been around quite a long time, this first Bible. In fact, if you took the whole of uh, creation from the begin when God spoke and it, it came to be to this moment in time and if it is 13.8 billion years and you compacted that into 12 months of the year so the 1st of January it all began uh, and we're now on the 31st of December the Bible came about the last few seconds of the 31st of December so it's quite recent and I heard somebody say the other day, what was God doing in April? And what was God doing on the 20th of October at 10 o'clock in the morning? God has been involved in this world of his right from the very beginning. And if that sounds like sort of sentimental interpretation, then you don't believe me. Believe Paul when he says in Romans 1 verse 20, but the basic reality of God is plain enough. Open your eyes and there it is. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what God has created, people have always been able to see what their eyes as such can't see. Eternal power, for instance, and the mystery of his divine being. I love that, the mystery of his divine being, revealed in what he's created. Now, from, as many of us have, have said many, many times, and, 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 uh, uh, and we've heard on the radio and the TV, this last year, has, this lockdown, has given us an opportunity maybe to reconnect with some of the things around us that perhaps we were too busy in the past to have really noticed. My walks have been uh, a real sort of uh, revelation to me because it's made me look at things again and again in ways that I'd never looked at them before. In fact, we've seen all four seasons now, haven't we? And we're entering spring again. I was taking a walk the other day. I can't I think, look, looking at the daffodils. Thinking, Gosh, it's a year ago that I was doing this, wondering how long this was all going to go on for. But it's been a wonderful opportunity, really. Just looking at flowers. There was a, something on the, the, the one show last week. Just looking at flowers. Just looking at flowers releases endorphins. Those that feel good. 
Walking in trees. Now, the Japanese have known this for a long time. Forest bathing sounds a bit weird, but no, walking in trees can actually calm you down, reduce your blood pressure, bring your heart rate down, and again, release those endorphins, just being amongst trees. So I've really enjoyed my walks in that sense. And I have helped it, it has helped me to really relax as I've gone out. And I've just looked at nature around me. Um, one of the walks that I do takes me past a field with four horses in. And they're, they're, they're just four ordinary horses, they're not the four horsemen of the apocalypse or anything like that. <laughs> Although it does feel like that at times, doesn't it? <laughs> um, now, I, I've never been particularly keen on horses in a way, um, but over the last few years I've come to, to appreciate them more and more. And these horses, they've all got names up on the, up on the fence and uh, they've all got their personalities there as well. Um, and I took an apple core and I was just giving it to one of the horses. And I was, and this sounds a bit weird, and you're going to think it sounds weird, I was talking to them. Okay. Um, and when I get, this horse looked at me and I just got this, this sense that it, was, it knew something that I didn't know, that I needed to remember. It sort of looked at me as if to say, come on, remember, listen, remember. Um, remember what? Well, actually this morning on the radio, they were saying that they've discovered that horses can recognise themselves in mirrors and that they put some markings on a horse's face and then they showed the horse its reflection in the mirror and the horse tried to get the markings off. And they're beginning to think, well, maybe horses have a sense of individuality. I bet they do. I bet they do. But anyway. Um, yeah, I got the impression that they, they knew something like that. They were in on a secret and that they were listening to something that I couldn't hear. Now, just bear with me a minute because I'm going to go to a little bit of a metaphor here, I suppose. But they were listening to a song. They were listening to a song that I needed to hear. I needed to hear it that morning and at that moment. And it just sparked something in me. And as I walked, I went down to the river um, and I was just listening to the trees. There was a bit of a breeze blowing. And I felt that the trees knew the song as well, OK? Um, I felt the trees could hear it. And then I was looking at the, the, the egret on the, on the, on the uh, river and it, it sort of flew past me and I thought, he knows the song too. And even the water rushing over the rocks, there's a little waterfall there. The water knows the secret. The water knows the secret. The water knows the song. The water knows the song. Um, now, you probably think I've lost my senses here, but um, it was very, very real to me as I went down there. And I thought about a song. And I thought about the fact that, well, I'm going to read you this little bit from, um, from The Magician's Nephew, written by C.S. Lewis. It's from the Chronicles of Narnia. And just to set the scene, it's about the creation of Narnia. And that the creation of Narnia is all darkness. And then the lion, Aslan, starts to sing. In the darkness, something was happening at last. A voice had begun to sing. It was very far away, and Diggory found it hard to decide from which direction it was coming. Sometimes it seemed to come from all directions at once. Sometimes he almost thought it was coming out of the earth beneath them. Its lower notes were deep enough to be the voice of the earth itself. There were no words, there was hardly even a tune, but it was beyond comparison the most beautiful noise that he had ever heard. It was so beautiful he could hardly bear it. Then two wonders happened at the same moment. One was that the voice was suddenly joined by other voices, more voices than you could possibly count. They were in harmony with it, but far higher up the scale. Cold, tingling, silvery voices. The second wonder was that the blackness overhead, all at once, was blazing with stars. They didn't come out gently one by one, as they do on a summer evening. One moment there had been nothing but darkness. The next moment a thousand, thousand points of light leapt out. Single stars, constellations and planets brighter and bigger than any in our world. There were no clouds. The new stars and the new voices began at exactly the same time. If you had seen and heard it as Diggory did, you would have felt quite certain that it was the stars themselves that were singing. And it was the first voice, the deep one, that had made them appear and had made them sing. The creation of Narnia, when Aslan sings Narnia and all the creatures and all that was there, the whole world, into being. I love that story. I really do. I love the way that he puts that. And if you listen to this passage from Job, you'll see that the Bible tells us the same thing. This is a great bit. I love this bit. This is where Job has been through all the, the difficulties he's been through. His, uh, his, uh, his friends had advised him all of this and that and the other. And then he finally appears before God, or God appears before him, and he says, God says to Job, 
Well, where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? I love this bit because whenever you're wondering what God's doing or why this or why that, then this is a really good answer. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you know. Who measured it? I'm sure you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? What was it built on? Who laid its most important stone? When it happened, the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted with joy. Creation is singing. God spoke or sang, if you like, this universe into being. And that melody, I think, vibrates through everything that he's made. It's still there. The song is still there. It's still there. I believe if you go out this afternoon and you just quiet yourself and you just look, that you'll hear some strains from that song. So why do we forget the song? Well, it just struck me that we are all singing, really. But what song are we singing? Like the Regent Honey Eater, I just forget the song. I just forget it. The pressures of life. I was thinking about the parable of the sower that Jesus tells, where the seed is scattered on different soils, and on the on the uh, the rocky ground it springs up, but it's got no root and it dies. On the path it's trodden underfoot. Um, amongst the weeds they grow up and choke it, and then some of the seed fill, fill, falls on good soil and it sprouts and it gives a harvest. And I always thought, oh Lord, make me the good soil, make me the good soil. And I just felt the other day God say to me, you're all the soils, you're all of them. That's the truth of the matter. Some of it will fall on good soil. Some of it will, and some of it has. But there's a lot of it that you're going to need to deal with those weeds. There's a bit of rocky stuff there. And some of it's just been trodden down by the pressures of life. The sheer force of this world, the spirit of this world. A drone which can drown out the melody that is all around us. The distressing images on TV, the feeling of powerlessness that they bring, especially at this time. It just drowns out the sound of the, uh, uh, that sound, that song, that melody. Poli political machinations, the greed of a consumer society, the desire for more and better, the fear of missing out, the need to blame the other, the other. If you think Christians are above such things, just look at history and examine your own heart, because I can see all of that in myself as well. There's a Chinese proverb, and I love this, and I, I'd like to have unpacked this more, but he who blames others has a long way to go on his journey. He who blames himself is halfway there. He who blames no one has arrived. And, and I just love that because, you know, we, we, we want to blame everybody else for the things that go wrong. Now, I'm, 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 I'm really good at blaming the government for some of the things that I see, to be quite honest with you, on TV. I really am. My wife tells me, you've got to stop this. You've got to stop this. Um, but you know what, we're all, we're, we're all involved. When we begin to realise our own culpability, our own blame, our own hardness of heart, um, we're, we're, we're on the journey. But when we stop blaming ourselves, when we realise that God loves us anyway, when we fall into his arms and realise that we're just flawed, completely and utterly flawed, but God loves us anyway, then we've arrived. And of course that journey is one that we do all the time, again and again and again. When we love our neighbour as ourselves, I was thinking about this as well. Jesus didn't say, love your neighbour, you need to love your neighbour um, and, you know, love yourself as well, but as yourself. If we don't love ourselves, if we don't realise that God loves us and accepts us exactly, and I mean exactly as we are, then we can't really love anybody else. And we certainly can't love God. Not if we think God's judging us every day. And then, like the region, Regent Honey Eater, there's a tendency to copy the songs around us. And I know I've sung quite a few songs in my life. I really have. And a lot of them have sounded like the real song. And I think the most difficult ones are the ones that do sound like the true song. I was thinking this morning, just reflecting on the fact that it's Palm Sunday, about how those hosannas, you know, on, on, on Palm Sunday turn to shouts of crucify him by the end of the week, you know. I mean, the world is fickle, we are fickle. And the other thing is sometimes it could be an obsession with the words, you know. Um, one of the things that, that came up in, about this book, The Musical Human, was that before music was recorded, as it is today, that words often evolved, words often changed when the song was sung, depending on who was singing it and depending on, um, on the place that it was being sung. And I thought that was interesting as well. Uh, but we have a feeling sometimes, this is the way it's got to be. This is the way it should be. And also, we might worry that we've got the words right. Have I got the words right? Have I said them in the right order? Have I prayed the right prayer? Have I done? You know, all of that can just get in the way of us just listening to the melody, to the tune. I did wonder why, you know, sort of movements of God um, start off, and, you know, sort of really amazing, and then somehow they just fizzle out. They solidify. 
because maybe we've got to. This is the way. This is how we. This is how God comes and does something. We pray this prayer. We do this thing, and then God comes and meets with us. But you know, the Holy Spirit, as Jesus said, it's like the wind. It'll, he'll come where He wants and He'll go where He wants, and things change, things develop, things grow, things go on. The song develops and grows. In Eastern cultures, there, there's a, a freedom in singing, much more of a freedom. Um, it's for everyone. And I really like that because uh, I can't sing at all. Um, and uh, when I was at school, I loved singing and I joined the school choir. And we were going to do a concert. And uh, I was very excited about it. And I invited my parents to come along to hear me sing in the school choir. And uh, in the last rehearsal, the teacher was saying, somebody is really singing off tune here. And, 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 and she walked around and she was listening to each person. And she came to me, it's you, she said to me, it's you. So she said, are you coming tonight? I said, yes, I am. She said, well, I don't want you to sing. I just want you to mime. And I thought my mum and dad were there and everything. So I have to say I sung at the top of my voice completely because I was very put out. But after that, I found myself shut down and I found myself thinking, oh, you know, well, I won't sing. And I've just, you know, I've labelled myself as somebody who can't sing. But singing is for everyone. This guy was saying everyone can sing. All right, some people are very, very musical, and some people have the most amazing voices, but we all need to sing, which is probably why one of the things that's been denied us in, in, during this time is the opportunity in worship to sing, to all be together, to come unmasked. It sounds quite biblical, doesn't it? Before the face of God. Um, so that, you know, so that uh, we can just enjoy the, the, the freedom that there is that comes from singing. Well, how can we recognise the song? Um, and I may have told this story before, um, but I'll tell it again. I, I read this uh, not that long ago. Um, there was a, 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 this couple, they'd got two children. They'd got, an, one was four, a boy of four, and they just had another baby, another little boy. And one day the four-year-old said to his parents, can you leave me alone with the baby, please? So they were going, why? So I, I, want, to, I want to ask him something. So they, they were saying, okay. So they left him alone, they went out, and they left him. They listened at the door to hear what he was going to ask his baby brother. And he said to his baby brother, quick, tell me where I come from before I forget. I'm beginning to forget. I thought that was really, really good and really profound. You know, we're forgetting, we're forgetting. The song is all around us. The song is in us, but we forget so easily the song. It's a song of grace. It's a song of justice. It's a song of truth. It's a love song from God himself. And I think, you know, during times of great suffering and great joy, you know, the Celtic Christians believe that they were thin places in this world where somehow heaven broke through. Um, and if you've ever been at the birth of a baby, you'll know that that is an incredibly thin place. Or with the death of a loved one. That there's a thin place. And in great difficulty, but the song can be louder then. The song can be louder. I remember even now, if I watch a baby born on TV, I just cry. I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't even know the people. But it... It's just there's something just incredible. The song is very loud in those, th those times. So what are some of the words? Where is the song? Well, where compassion, mercy, and forgiveness flow in relationships. That is the song. Where the Palestinian and the Israeli embrace among the ruins of yet another senseless bombing. That is the song. Where the mother of a young 16-year-old brutally stabbed to death chooses to forgive the perpetrator. That is the song where I choose to rejoice in the success and blessing of another, that is the song. Where you choose to pray for your enemies, that is the song. Where we embrace our failures and frailties and realise that God loves us anyway, that is the song. And when we all show dignity and respect to the whole of creation, not for what we can exploit and get from it, but because of its intrinsic worth, that is the song. So how can we hear it? You know, in this busy world and in, in our busy lives, um, how can we hear the song? Well, I think like Elijah on the mountain that listened for the voice of God, um, we need to be still and we need to be quiet. I mean, I don't think the song, for me anyway, is some loud, stirring song of victory, like some Hollywood film. But I think it's persistent. I think it's an enduring melody, which is the gospel itself which is good news, which is good news. And I don't think we hear the song by effort. You know, more Bible reading, more regular attendance at church. 
more conferences or Christian books. Not that those things can't be really, really good and desirable. But I want to be transformed. I don't want to become more religious. And there is a, a fine line sometimes there. And sometimes failure to reach those self-inflicted goals, and I've said this before, I've set myself so many in my journey as, as in, in, in the Christian faith. I'm going to do this. I've got books at home. I've opened up and read them about, and I'm chastising myself. You know, I'm going to write in this journal every day, and I want God to do this and do that. And then, and then the next day there's an entry, and then the next day there's an entry. And suddenly there's blank pages. And then I come back. I'm getting a little bit more victorious, and then I come back, and I can see, oh, I've failed again. I failed again. I haven't met the standards that I've set myself. Get rid of them all. Get rid of them all. They're a means to an end, but they're not the end in themselves. I want to be transformed. I want to be more loving. I want to be more patient and calm. But I don't think I'm going to get there by making the effort. Nobody became more loving by waking up one morning and saying, I'm going to be more loving today. It just doesn't work. I bet you you'd be less, less loving that day than you would any other day. Change comes through transformation. I can listen to thousands of sermons, and I have. I can read the Bible cover to cover, and I have. I can attend conferences and read a library of books. I had a big cull on my Christian books today. I can't believe how many I've got. I thought if I just put three or four of those into practice, you know, I'd be, I'd be raptured. I'd be gone. I really would, if I'm to believe what it says in them. Um, I could do all of that, I, and on how to be books on how to be more holy and spiritual, I can still be as mean-spirited and judgmental as I started out, definitely. But when I hear the song, when I hear the song, when we hear the song, when we collapse into the arms of the Father after our excursion into a far-off country, and we've all been there, haven't we? Not just once, but many, many times I have anyway. I've got a season ticket, I think. When we realign with the divine, and that's what the word religion means. It actually means realign to realign with the truth, to realign with God. And that's a good use of it, isn't it? Then we are transformed. The song is a love song, and the words are many and diverse, and above all, personal. And here's just some of the, these are the core words, and I want to read these to you. I've read them before, you've heard them before, but they're from Colossians 1, verses 15 to 20, and for they're from the message. These are the words. We look at this sun and we see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this sun and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment now. And when it comes to the church, he organises and holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the end. He was, sorry, he was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's there, towering far above everything and everyone. So spacious is he, so expansive that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of this universe, people and things, animals and atoms get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. That's the song. That's the song. And you know, sometimes we can be singing that song and we don't know the words, but we can be singing the song. We can be going with the melody. And I think that there are people singing the song with words that are different from our words, maybe. But they're still singing the song. Where there's justice, where there's truth, where there's love, where there's grace, where there's compassion, it's the song. It's the song. It's the song. All truth is God's truth. All compassion, all love, everything good and beautiful and wonderful has its roots in him and is part of that melody that, that is all around us now. The Franciscan Richard Raw says this, if Jesus is the face of God, then we live in a safe and benevolent world. We live in a world where God is on our side, where we have nothing to be afraid of, where God is more on your side than you are on your own. And that is where to know that God is on my side, to know that God loves me, to God, know that God loves me despite all those blank pages in my journal, despite all the mean-spiritedness that I come up with, despite my criticism of people that I see, my, my, my 
speed in ju making judgments on other people and the things that they do and the things that they wear, the things that they... How ridiculous, how petty, how awful, how awful when we see that in ourselves, rather than collapse in on ourselves and feel that we are just, oh, how could God love us? We realise even more how much God loves us, how much God receives us, like the father received the prodigal son coming back, how we can run into his arms and we can be reunited with the song again and again and again and again. And then we will begin to be transformed and then we will begin to change. I'd like to, to finish... Um, by reading this, this is um, a poem um, by uh, a children's writer Michael Morpurgo. Michael Morpurgo um, is uh, one of my favourite authors. I mean, having been a teacher for many years, we've read many of his books. Um, but I really like Michael Morpurgo, and he wrote this poem at the beginning of lockdown. And I just like to finish by reading you this poem because it somehow sums up most of what I've been saying although he hasn't written it from a Christian perspective, but, but it's got truth in it. Listen to this. I've been talking every morning to Blackbird. He's not the only person that talks to the animals then. Telling him why we're all so sad at the moment. He sits on his branch and listens. It was Blackbird's idea. He sang out this morning at dawn from his treetop in the garden to Fox half asleep behind the garden shed. She thought it a good idea too. It was a wake-up call. Fox was on her feet at once and trotting through Bluebell Wood where she barked it to deer who ran off across the stream. Kingfisher was there, Otter and Dipper too. They heard and piped it on and Swallow swooped down over the meadow and passed it on to the cows waiting to go to their milking and to sheep resting quietly under the hedge with her lambs in the corner of the dew-damp field. And they all agreed, bleating it out to bees already buzzing at their flowers, to weaving spiders and grasshoppers and scurrying mice, trees, heard sheep calling too, the whole flock of them, and waved their budding leaves in wild enthusiasm, and high above the clouds wandered through the skies, driven by wind, and the wind took Blackbird's idea over the cliffs, across heaving seas, where gulls and albatross cried it out, and whales and dolphins and porpoises heard it, and wailed and whooped it down to the deep, where turtles listened, and they too loved the idea. So did plankton and every fish and crab and sea urchin and whelk, they all whispered that it was a fine notion, the best they had ever heard. And the whisper went out over the sea on the curling waves to the shores of Africa where lions roared their approval and elephants trumpeted it, leopards yawned it, water buffalo belched it, wild dogs yelped it, wildebeest murmured it out across the savannah and storm lifted the idea up over the rainforest where the rain took it and poured it down on gorillas in the mist. On chimpanzees in their sleeping nests, howler monkeys and gibbons echoed their call loud above over all the earth. They are that loud. And then from far up high the sun heard it too and shone it down over deserts where Oryx stamped her foot, impatient to be getting on with it and doing it. She loved the idea that much. Even Camel, who rarely joined in anything, thought it was the best and the most beautiful idea that he had ever heard. Back in the garden, Blackbird waited till everyone was ready and then he began to sing. And the whole carnival of animals and every living thing on this good earth joined in until the globe echoed with the joy of it. And Blackbird was very pleased. But I was still lost in sadness as I heard the earth singing around me. It was a song of forgiveness. I knew that. So I asked Blackbird if I could join in and he sang his answer back to me. Why do you think we are doing this, you silly man? We want you and yours to be happy again. Only then will you treat us with the, and the world right again, as you know you should. Only then will all be well. Sing, silly man. Sing, sing, sing. Our song is your song. Your song is our song. So I sang and we all sang, we sang away our sadness in every house and flat and cottage, we clapped and sang in every hut and tent, in every palace and hospital and prison, and, and they heard and we heard our song of gladness echoing all together in glorious harmony across the universe. That's the sort of song I mean. Everything is involved in it, all that he made, and we just need to listen for it. It's just there. Thank you. Thank you. truth is that that song is found in Jesus it always starts and it always it always ends in Jesus Jesus said I am the way no one comes to the father except through me no one comes to that song except through me we catch glimpses of it through truth and through wisdom and through those parts in life where 
it's just thinner and we can we, it feels like we can hear that song reverberating through the walls but Jesus said I am the way no one truly comes to the father except through me and he said that and then he died for you he said I am the way now I'm going to do it I'm going to lay my life down because I'm the way to prepare a way for you to come to the father to come back to that song and this week we're we're focusing on it it's highlighted it's part of our traditions and so on but the bottom line is it's coming back to reminding ourselves that Jesus is the way back to that song Jesus is the way back to the father and sometimes we forget sometimes we let go sometimes we resist we don't want sometimes we're scared to open the door of what that truly means but as a loving benevolent father He just wants to be with us. He just wants us to open up that door to him. So we're just going to pray, and then I'm just going to read the blessing, and then we're going to close. But wherever you are, let's just welcome him in. Jesus, we invite you in. Sometimes we don't know where we're going, but we, we want to know where you are. Lead us to, to the Father. Lead us to that song that we crave, that we desire, that we want, that we need, Lord. We lay ourselves down and we welcome you in. Come and have your way, Jesus. Come and have your way in our hearts. And we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace and reveal his song in your heart this week and forevermore. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for, for coming in this morning. Thank you for, for tuning in. We will see you next Sunday, 11 o'clock at Nobel School, outside. Come along. If you've been skating around the outsides of church for a while, but wondering what this whole deal is about, come along and come join with us. We'd love to have you there. I would love to see all your bright and shiny and happy faces. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.